Well, good morning, everyone. Choir, thanks for leading us so wonderfully today. It's so good to be together, to worship the Lord together today. I'm glad that you are here. And for those who are watching online today, hello to you as well. Glad that you're here uh, today, too. Well, I had no idea how that one little piece of advice was going to shape my whole life. I was headed to college at Anderson University as a freshman, and I was so excited, and and I was taking in a lot of advice those days. You know, everybody has a tidbit to share with you in a moment like that in life. And my youth pastor and his wife, Chris and Candy Spitters, uh, had some advice for me. Now, I have to tell you that my youth pastors were like family to me. I loved my youth pastors. I babysat for their kids all the time. They knew me so well, and they were trusted voices in my life. And as I headed to college, they said to me, Aaron, there's another girl that's going to AU as a freshman, and her name is Crystal Pearson. And you've got to meet this girl. I think you guys would be great friends. They knew Crystal when she was a little kid back in California. So I tucked that advice away in my mind, but didn't think a whole lot about it throughout my freshman year. A time or two thought, oh, I wonder if I'll run into this Crystal girl, but never really did. Until this One day, it was the last week of school, my freshman year, and I was down in the bottom of Decker getting my mail, and my friend Lizzie, who was going to be my roommate the next year, said, oh, oh, I got to go. I'm going to go meet my friend Crystal for lunch. And that piece of advice sparked in my head, and I said, wait, Lizzie, did you say you're meeting Crystal? Crystal who? And she said, Crystal Pearson. I said, you know Crystal Pearson? This girl I haven't run into all year long. I said, can I go with you? (laughs) So I, I went and I met this Crystal Pearson girl. And let me tell you, that was good advice from my youth pastors. She became my best friend. She is my BFF. This is us in college. Boy, we took road trips together. We walked through all kinds of ups and downs together, through dating fiascos that we advised each other on. Um, we, uh, We stood up for one another in weddings, and we've walked through lives, through our lives together. She is the person that I can tell anything to. She's on my speed dial, and I know that no matter what, I can share with her, and she'll love me and pray with me and advise me. Oh, my goodness, I'm telling you, this woman is amazing. And I am so glad that I listened to that little bit of advice. Aaron, you got to meet this Crystal Pearson. Now she's Crystal Snyder. I'm so glad that I listened to those voices because that became one of the great gifts in my life. And you know, isn't it funny that life is a lot like that, isn't it? We have these moments, these these things that we hear, these little decisions that we make, these very small things that we don't have any idea in the moment that that this will be a life-shaping thing. That what we're about to experience or a person we're about to meet or a decision that we make has the power to really change the trajectory in our lives. Today we're wrapping up this series called Small Things, Big Difference. And we've been talking about what it is for us to think about those small things, those small decisions that can have a profound difference in our lives. We started by talking about what it means to get some rest Not only because we need rest, but because it helps us order how we see ourselves and how we see God. Then we talked about the choice to believe the best in someone. While it might be easy for us to assume the worst, what a gift it is when we choose to believe the best. Then last week we talked about the small choice to love one another and to be intentional about being in community and to be connected with others and not try and go it alone. Well, today we're going to dive into this great story in the New Testament, and we're going to look at a moment when someone made a decision, the decision to follow Jesus. It was a small decision that changed everything. And I believe that 
that for all of us here today, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what's going on in your daily life, no matter whether you've been following Jesus for decades or you are not sure yet about making that kind of choice, I believe that for all of us, God has a word today and something that he wants to say to us. Will you pray with me? Our gracious God, as we open your word today, Lord, we pray that you would help us to hear your voice. God, thank you for these wonderful stories in the scripture and for the way that we can find our own stories within. Lord, we open our eyes and ears and hearts to you now. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Well, if you open your Bibles to Luke chapter 5, this is where we're going to dive into the story, and we're going to walk through it little piece by piece in Luke chapter 5. It begins this way. One day... As Jesus was standing by the lake of Gisenaret, also known as the Sea of Galilee, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. Let's pause here for a moment. We find throughout the Gospels that Jesus has this connection many times with fishermen. Uh, As many as seven of the 12 disciples were known to be fishermen. I think that fishermen had some qualities about them that were also good qualities for people who were to follow Jesus. Uh, When you're a fisherman, you are working out on the seas, and there's something about that profession that, that requires courage and daring and also a lot of perseverance and not giving up. You never quite know what the day will hold. It's really a profession of faith in many ways uh, to be a fisherman. It's a task that requires working together and and working with one another uh, in order to accomplish the task. And Jesus here sees that there are some fishermen nearby and there are a couple of boats that are there. And uh, he notices not just the boats, but Jesus notices the people, these fishermen who are washing their nets, a symbol of perseverance, washing out their nets so they won't rot, so that they're ready for the next time that they will go for a catch. Let's look at verse 3. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. So this is the first moment in the Gospel of Luke where we're introduced to this man named Simon. We'll also read that he's Simon Peter in this story, or most often just known as Peter. We've talked about Peter before. He's this bigger-than-life personality. He's a fascinating disciple to study, and most of us find him very relatable because he's very human. He often puts his foot in his mouth. He gets himself into some awkward situations, but he's an all-in kind of guy, and this is the first moment that we meet him in the Gospel of Luke, and Jesus has an instruction for him. He says, put out into deep water and let down the nets, the nets he's just been washing, let them down for a catch. So uh, let's look at how Peter responds to Jesus. There's sort of a two-part response. The first is this. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. You see, Peter's responding, I think, trying to be gracious to Jesus. After all, Jesus is a carpenter, not a fisherman. So this might be a little bit beyond what the expertise of Jesus would be in a situation like this. And so Simon just wants to make sure that Jesus has some context here. You know, we, we just were fishing all night because, you see, it's a well-known fact there on the Sea of Galilee that, that you caught fish at night in shallow water, <laughs> not during the day in deep water. Jesus is giving him advice that's opposite the way that fishermen would go about their trade. But look at the second part of Peter's response. He says, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. 
you know, I, I wonder what was it that, that motivated Simon to say that to Jesus, to respond and say, okay, I'll do it. I will follow. I'll, I'll do what you've asked me to do. Well, he, you notice that he calls him master. So we notice that, that Simon's already recognizing some authority that, that Jesus has in the situation. I wonder, as Simon was washing out those nets, I'm thinking he was probably listening to this teaching of Jesus. He was paying attention. I wonder what Jesus was teaching that day from Simon's boat. I don't know. But it certainly had an impact on Simon because he responded to Jesus in a way that made it clear that he trusted his authority. You see, that's, that's really true about us because when someone tells us to do something, when someone invites us to do something, the trustworthiness of the source is key in how we respond. Isn't that true about us? It's all about the source of the request. For Simon, it's Jesus. He recognizes that, that Jesus has authority. He recognizes this is not an ordinary person. There's something special about him. And so he considers the source. Because you say so, Jesus, I will. Because of who Jesus is. Isn't that true for us as well? If your good friend recommends a restaurant to you, chances are you'll be likely to go there because you trust your friend. You trust their advice. In the same way, if, if you need to go somewhere or get something done, don't you look to your friends for some advice? Say, who should I go to to cut my hair or, or to repair my car or to do this job around my house? Who do you know? Who do you trust? Who have you worked with before? The recommendations and referrals, that, that's everything to us. And, and so often we ask people that we know and trust and care about because if they say so, then of course it's true. Just like when my youth pastor says, I should meet this girl named Crystal, I listened, I trusted that voice. And now when my best friend says, hey, I found this new great moisturizer that you really need to try, well, it is on the counter in my bathroom now because she told me that. And if she says so, then I believe it is true, and I'm going to follow through. Because you say so. See, when we trust the source, it's easy to follow. Because you say so, I will. I've been thinking about that phrase a lot this week. And I had this idea, Dan, I was kind of thinking we should paint a big mural in our home for our kids that just says this right here. I think this would be a good, like, theme for our house, you know, because you say so, I will. I, I really, this is, you know, I, I'm thinking this is a really good idea in our house. Now, now, we, Dan and I have four kids, and they are great kids. I could talk to you all day long about how amazing these kids are. We are so blessed that God entrusted them to us. And also, I know that they're humans. And that means that at this moment, ages seven, six, five, and two, I had to look at my notes just to make sure I got that right. <laughs> seven, six, five, and two at this moment, they're really good at being those ages um, and all that comes along with it. So we are always talking about what it means to listen and obey in our house. In fact, a friend of ours uh, taught us this little saying that we've taught to our kids. Dan can say it back to me. How do we listen and obey? Right away, all the way, in a happy way. You know, write that down. <laughs> How do we listen and obey? Right away, all the way, in a happy way. This is good. We actually have dropped the in a happy way a lot of times because we thought... <laughs> You know, we won't require the happiness, but right away, all the way, yes, we need to work on this. Because there are moments in our homes where, where I, I look at my children and I think, are your ears working? You don't even hear me. I've said your name six times. You haven't even acknowledged it. I've given you this instruction several times. Hello, I'm speaking to you. And I'm your parent, you know, the one that feeds you and puts you to bed and gives you clothes and all of these things. And you should trust me 
that when I tell you to pick up your toys, it's not just because the toys need to be picked up. It's, it's because I'm trying to develop your character. And I, right? <laughs> and I want you to, to be a person that takes care of their things and is invested in, in doing the right thing as you grow up. And I just think to my kids, would you just listen and obey? Please, come on, you know my voice. Would you just listen and obey? <laughs> And I wonder how often God feels that way about me and about you. In those moments when the Lord wants us to know, I'm crazy about you, I love you so much, and I want you to listen and obey because I have good things in mind for you, good things in mind for, your, for the moment and good things in mind to develop your character and to shape you into the kind of person I want you to be, good things to be free and to experience full life. And I wonder how often the Lord sits on his throne and looks at me and looks at you and says, would you just listen and obey? <laughs> Would you just follow my voice? Don't you know that I can be trusted? And you know, I think about that moment for Peter, and I think about that instruction that Jesus had for him that didn't make any sense. Go out into deep water in the middle of the day. Those are not things that a fisherman would do there on the Sea of Galilee. And let down your nets for a catch. And I wonder... Did Peter have any idea what was hanging in the balance in that moment? All that was, that was staked on that moment of obedience. If only Peter would have the courage to obey what Jesus asked of him. Let's keep looking at this story and how it continues to unfold. Picking up at verse 6. When they had done so, when they had let those nets down, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they singled, signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. What a picture. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed Jesus. You know, what if Peter would have missed this moment? What if he, he just would have said, no, I'm, I'm not following these instructions. What if he would have missed this? This moment, this miraculous catch of fish, this can't miss moment that he would think about for the rest of his life and probably just laugh and giggle thinking about it. It was absolutely unbelievable. What if he would have missed this moment, the, the moment that time and time again his mind would go back to when the going got tough, when he remembered who Jesus was and the way that he had been called what if he would have missed this moment when, when everything changed and he began to see who Jesus was? But not just this moment. What if Peter would have missed then the, the adventure ahead, the way that all of the things would unfold as a result of this? What if Peter would have missed the opportunity to follow Jesus, to be a part of the inner circle with Jesus and to know him and love him and to watch these miracles unfold, to see Jesus crucified, buried, and raised again? What if Peter would have missed that? And not just that, not just Peter's moment, not just Peter's lifetime, but, but what if Peter would have missed this? Because it's not just about his story, but it's about generations of Jesus followers who come after him. After all, Jesus later said to Peter, Peter, on this rock, you, Peter the rock, on this rock, I will build my church. See, we sit here today in a church and we have a connection all the way back to Peter. 
to a man who obeyed and who a man who saw Jesus and helped others experience the transforming work of Jesus in their lives. You see, it's true for Peter and it's true for us when we have a moment of, a, a moment of decision, a, a choice to follow Jesus, we never know what might be hanging in the balance. It's a small thing, a decision, a moment of obedience. It was a small thing for Peter to just go and let those nets down for a catch. So how about you today? Imagine that you were to see Jesus today face to face, eyeball to eyeball. I wonder if in the same way he would look at you and he would have an instruction for you today. Somehow to, to go out into deep water, to push out somewhere farther than you've gone before. What is that deep water for you? Perhaps today that's deep water because you're still trying to figure out who Jesus is. You're still trying to explore what it means to be a Jesus follower. You're trying to figure him out. And, and today you feel him inviting you to trust him. Maybe today that means surrendering yourself to Jesus for the first time and trusting him with your life and choosing to follow him. Or maybe you've decided to do that a while ago, but, but Jesus is saying to you, push out into deep water because there's more that I want to do in your life. And it's been a while. We've been drifting apart. And I want to invite you to push out into deep waters because there are new things that I want to do in your life. And today is a moment of re-surrendering before the Lord. Or it may be that you've been faithfully following Jesus for a long time in your life. But it may be that, that Jesus, if he was eyeball to eyeball with you today, he would have a very specific thing that he would talk about a deep water place in your life. One of those places that maybe has been off limits for God for a while. Those, one of those things that, that you've been keeping to yourself and you haven't been giving God access to. And he's inviting you today to go and push out into a deep water place. You see, this is what it means to follow Jesus that he invites us to go to deeper places and he invites us to surrender and trust him and follow him in new ways so that nothing is off limits in our lives. And I believe today that you have the opportunity to choose to follow Jesus in new ways, a small decision, an ordinary moment that makes a big difference. You know, when we think about the story it was such a small moment of decision for Peter. And I wonder, what are some of those small moments of decision for you? It might be for you that those small moments of decisions happen in the context of a relationship, where you have the opportunity to choose how you're going to treat someone or how you're going to respond in the moment. If you're going to choose forgiveness, if you're going to choose grace or patience, if you're going to choose to pause and take a breath, just as Ben led us to do. Maybe for you, when you think about those small moments, maybe it's showing up for something that you were invited to, to be a part of something, to engage and, and not be reclusive, but to take the relational risk. Maybe for you, there are some daily wise choices as you want to be a person with healthy habits in your life. Maybe those are some of the small decisions that you have. Or, or maybe a small decision is to reach out to another person, to connect with them, to take the risk, to make a friend. I don't know what that small thing might be for you, but I know that throughout our lives, throughout our days, God wants to lead us, that he is speaking to us and that he invites us to follow him. If only we will listen and obey and not miss the moment. So if we think about this, if, if we believe this, that, that our God is a God who invites us, our, our God is a God who speaks to us and who communicates with us, then we should ask the question, how are our listening skills? How well are we listening these days? Because if we believe that God has some deep water places in store for us, then what are we doing to make sure that we are listening well? 
A couple of things I want you to think about as you think about your listening skills today. The first is this, make listening a habit. Make listening a habit. You know, I was thinking about my week this week. I had a moment, I went through a situation and got to the other side of it, and, and I, I felt like the Lord was whispering to me and, and saying to me, Aaron, you could have handled that differently. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I sure could have. I sure could have. And I felt the Lord whispering to me and, and challenging me, not shaming me, but, but inviting me to think about how I can grow and how I respond in a moment like that. And here's what I've learned over time in my life, that in a moment like that, if, if I pause and listen and trust his voice, his loving voice that's leading me, do you know that I start hearing his voice more so in my life? But I've also had moments in my life when I've felt the Lord say things like that to me and I've said, mm, no thank you. <laughs> nope, uh-uh, I don't wanna hear that today. But what I've learned is that if I have a posture of listening, if I'm trusting the Lord's leading and, and his voice in my life, because you see, here's the thing, as we follow God, the scripture tells us that, that he's given us his Holy Spirit and that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. That means when we choose to follow Jesus, that means that, that we can count on God communicating with us, that if, if we've surrendered our hearts to God, then we can trust him. In the daily moments of life, in those small moments, we can trust that God will lead us. And if we make a choice to be in the habit of listening, then we will be able to hear his voice even better. Author Henry Nouwen says, every time you listen with great attentiveness to the voice that calls you beloved, you will discover within yourself a desire to hear that voice longer and more deeply. Secondly, I'd like to encourage you today to get yourself in a position to hear. Now think about this. If, if you're wanting to learn about something, if you're wanting to be in the loop about something, if, if there's an event or a person or, or uh, something that you want to follow on social media, then, then what do you do? You have to actually position your life to be open to learn about that. Can you think about ways that we all do that in our lives? I can tell you I could name a bunch of retailers that are on my list for my email or text alerts because I want to follow them and I want to know what's going on there. On my social media pages, there's a couple of adoption groups that I follow because I appreciate the conversations there. There's a group that's, uh, that has uh, transracial families, and I want to follow them because there's really important conversations that happen there about race. I've also uh, started following the International Justice Mission as, as I want my heart to be cultivated and exposed to the idea that, that there are people enslaved all around the world, and I, and I want to know that, and I want to keep that at the forefront of my heart. So, you see, we all do that all the time. We, we say, well, this is something that I want to know about. This is something that I want to hear about. I want to be influenced by, and so we take these really simple steps to open our lives, to be influenced by those things. And that's important because the truth is life is busy and life is so full. And so if we want to be people that hear from God, if we believe that God has something to say to us, then we need to do everything that we can to put ourselves in a position to hear, to practice active listening. You know, you'll be much more likely to hear from God if you open his word and spend some time reading and learning what he has to say, he speaks through his living and active word. You can download a, a Bible app like the U version that's free and you can find reading plans and find ways to engage with the word of God every day. Coming to worship, whether you can come in person or watching online, finding those places to, to gather and to center your heart towards God. And another thing that's really important for us is to be in community. We talked about that last week. This is key. 
Because what we find is when we are following Jesus alongside other people, that our faith is sharpened by others, that, that we learn and we grow from the insights of others and the way that they encourage us along the way. Don't go it alone. You see, here's the thing. If, if you want to follow Jesus, if you're serious about that, if you believe that he has some new deep water places for you, some new can't miss moments ahead for you, then that means you need to do everything you can to open your life and to open your heart to listen. Today, I wanna remind you of a really practical way that you can do just that. Next Sunday, we're launching a six-week church-wide journey called Free. And together, we're going to think about what the scripture says, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Because we all have places in our lives where, where we aren't fully free, things that weigh us down or hold us back, things that maybe we're very accustomed to, but places where Jesus wants to help us to go into deep water and experience life abundantly like we have never known before. And I believe that no matter where you find yourself on your spiritual journey, whether you're just exploring who Jesus is or, or whether you've been following him for decades, I believe that God will use this journey that we have together as a church in a powerful way. And I want to encourage you to make some space to be a part of it. Now, this journey has some extra components. It's not just Sunday teaching. So the three components to be a part of this all-church journey are this. First, gather for worship on Sundays. Come together as we worship the Lord and hear teaching together about freedom. Second, to go through your guide. We'll have them available next week for you. Um, and this will be something to work through. It's a, it's a fun and interactive journal that's really practical. It's easy to do. Uh, and this will help you process what free looks like in your life. And third, to be in a small group for six weeks, a group that will meet every week. Most of them will be in homes throughout the area uh, to take time to hang out with other people uh, and experience what it is to go through this journey learning together. Now, maybe you've never been a part of a small group before and you wonder what in the world is this all about? Well, I wanna encourage you today. Maybe, just maybe, this is one of those places where Jesus is inviting you to go out into some deep water and take a risk and try something new that you've never tried before. And you just have to show up to the house. We'll tell you where to go. And I promise there will be nice people there. They will be glad to see you. If you go the first time and you think this is horrible, you don't have to go back. But that's not going to happen. Uh, it's just normal people sitting around a living room, having some conversation together, having some fun getting to know one another, and trusting that God can do a great thing when we're on the journey together. Today, after the service, when you go out into the hallway, there's a bulletin board there, and uh, listed are all of the groups that are available, and we have more and more groups that are starting. Uh, in fact, you can talk to us if you're interested in starting a group, but take that step today. Sign your name on the paper. Let us know that you want to be a part of a group. Push out into some deep water and try something new. It's only for six weeks. You can find all the information that's out there, and Pastor Ben and I will be there uh, after the service if you have questions or want to learn more. Uh, I believe that God has some awesome things in store for us in the weeks ahead. I can hardly wait to see what God may do. So today, whether it's signing up for a group or something else that the Lord has put on your heart today, a way that he's whispering to you and looking you in the eyes and inviting you to go out into deep water, to try something new and to trust him and follow him in new ways. My friends, I'm praying that you will have the courage today to respond and obey because I believe there are some can't miss moments with Jesus ahead for you and ahead for me. Will you stand and pray with me? Our gracious God, we're so grateful for the way that you lead us. We're so grateful for the way that you invite us to come to you just as we are. 
and for the way that you invite us to experience deep waters and new adventures in ways that are beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. And so God, I pray for all of us today, Lord, that you would give us courage to respond and to obey. And I pray that you would help all of us to to work on our listening ears, that, that we might attune ourselves to your voice. Thank you, God, that you are the God who is living and active and speaking. Thank you for the way that you love us and for the way that you lead us. Lord, we say yes to you today. We want to follow you. And it's in the name of Jesus, our Savior, that we pray. Amen.